I wanted to ask you guys, church, where is Jesus? In your heart. Where is Jesus? Huh? With us. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Jesus right now is not here with us. You might be like, oh, what are you talking about? Well, let me burst that bubble. Jesus right now, he's in heaven. He's, as Joe said, he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's not here. Who is here? Amen. The Holy Spirit is here. So when, when Jesus was on earth, this is what he said. In John chapter 14, he says, he says, if you love me, John chapter 14, verse 15, and so on. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, but will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you so Jesus is not here Jesus did his work now his work when he was walking on earth is is the cross he came to pay for the sins of the world because apart from Jesus me and you we cannot be saved on our own good works we me and you cannot receive salvation me and you cannot enter into heaven mean you cannot be reconciled back to God so Jesus came on earth he walked on earth healed the blind healed the sick did every supernatural miracle walked on water but he did his part and then he says these words in verse John 16 verse verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it is to your advantage that I go away it is better that I go away now if you would walk with Jesus and see him heal the blind and see him walk with walk, walk on water would you think it's better for you that he leaves I mean do you think Peter was like Lord are you out of your mind what are you telling me that it is better for me for you to, that I leave Jesus when you walked on water and you told me to come and I started to sink and I cried out to you, what did you do? You pulled me out. Why would it be better for Jesus to leave? Now think about this. The disciples walked with Jesus and even Peter himself said, Lord, I will never deny you. Ever. You can count on me. But little did Peter know that on his own strength, he couldn't do it. You see, Jesus, in all his glory, could affect the surroundings of his disciples, but he couldn't live inside of them. You see, the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they seen miracles that, that me and you have never seen. I mean, have you ever seen the Columbia River split in two? Have you ever seen manna fall from heaven? Have you ever seen a cloud by day and a fire by night to guide you? Incredible, incredible miracles. But even they, them, when they saw all these miracles, they complained. They murmured. They went into sin. They committed sexual immorality. They, they did all this junk. Why? Why? Because their insides was not changed. Their outside was impacted, but their inside of them was not changed. I like what Jesus says in John 15, in John 14, verse 18. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. Do you know what an orphan is? Have you ever felt like an orphan? 
Have you ever felt you have to do it on your own strength? An orphan is somebody that, that had a father, had a mother, but then the mother and the father left them or the mom and the dad died. And now that, that, that little child has to make it on their own strength. I love what Jesus said. I will not leave you as orphans. You don't have to do life on your own strength. Christianity is not coming to Jesus and then trying to make it on your own strength. Because <laughs> sometimes we feel like that. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. For he dwells with you. And he will be in you. He dwells with you. See before salvation. He dwells around you. Because apart from the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive Jesus. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to you. See the Holy Spirit does not talk about himself. He points you to Jesus. So before salvation, he's around you. When you receive Jesus, he lives in you. But then there's another manifestation, or I don't even know how to explain it, is when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, when you're baptized in fire, when you're submerged in God, when, when, when he affects your senses. You see, church, Jesus himself left all his God attributes in heaven and came to earth as a man he was a hundred percent man and a hundred percent god but he didn't use his divine god attributes meaning like when he was tempted in the wilderness to make that stone bread he didn't use god's superpower to make it bread what i mean by that he he fully submitted himself to the holy spirit and walked a submitted life to the holy spirit and the holy spirit led him a b c d to show us an example how we can make it on this earth. Do you understand what I'm trying to explain? Church, we have, we have Holy Spirit here on earth. If we can learn how to partner with Him. We can be effective in our business. In our marriage. In our careers. In our everyday life. Does that make sense? Have you ever tried to serve God on your own strength? How did that do for you? No, think, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being genuine. I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny or I'm not trying to be like... Uh, how did it how did you do when you try to serve God on your own strength? We can't. We cannot. You know, if you think that by your good works you can earn something, some kind of privileges with God, it's not gonna happen. In the Old Testament, Moses gave him the law, and it just showed us that we couldn't keep it. Because there's something inside of us that is broken that through Jesus we, we get reconciled and through the grace of the Holy Spirit we can, keep, we can keep God's laws. When he empowers us, not on our own strength. We can't do it on our own strength. How much do we need the Holy Spirit in our lives? Now, the beautiful thing about about the Holy Spirit is when Jesus was saying, it's to your advantage that I leave. Because if Jesus was still walked on earth and you, had a, and you had a question that you wanted to ask him, well, you would have to get in line because Peter would be the first person to talk. And then the other disciples and then Jesus would have to sleep 12 hours. And then Jesus came to the Jews, not the Gentiles. So me and you, we're in the Gentiles. So we'd be, we'll be, we'd be last class. You know, when you go to the airport and you go, and you go on the, um, uh, in the, what you call the plane. And the Jews would be the business class. We'd be all the way in the back. It's true. So the Holy Spirit 
can be with every single one of us in Brazil, in Africa, and in different parts of the world. And when Jesus said another helper, meaning not like a different kind, but a same kind, just like Jesus. Because Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Amen. So, open up to Ephesians. But before we talk about that in Ephesians, I want to, let's mention a couple things. What the Holy Spirit is not, even though the Bible mentions him, mentions him as a wind, as a dove, as an oil, as fire, a force, a cloud, rain, power. Church, we cannot have a relationship with oil. You cannot talk to the wind. Just because the Bible says the Holy Spirit descended as a dove, that, that does not mean the Holy Spirit is a dove. Now, if she ran like a horse, does that make her a horse? If she ran like the wind, does that make that person a wind? And just like that in the Bible, just because the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, does not mean the Holy Spirit is a dove. I know I'm preaching to the choir because you probably heard the best already from here. That's why when you go to different places, man, they just take everything that you have to say. We need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to develop a relationship more and more because if we cannot do it on our own strength, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit, He's a person. He's God. He has a will. He has emotions. In the book of Acts, when, when they were making the decision, they said, it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit. They had such a close relationship with the Holy Spirit that, that they already knew His heart. Church, we're not called to do this life on our own. The Holy Spirit is not for special people. It's given for every single one of us. Jesus calls him a helper. He wants to help you in every day and every single area of your life. But the problem is, this is the problem, is because the Holy Spirit is a person, just like any person like my wife, I can grieve my wife by being mean to her. I've done that and had to say sorry. (laughs) The Holy Spirit can be grieved. He can be quenched. He can be grieved. Like in Ephesians, it talks about grieving him with anger, with lying, stealing, gossiping, hurting others, speaking corrupt words, bitterness, wrath, sexual immorality, unforgiving. Grieves the Holy Spirit. When you talk about people, you gossip. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Church. God loves people. God died for people. God is coming back for people. People are broken. If you talk about people negatively, you're partnering with the wrong spirit. Because God's heart is to save as much more, as many as possible. As many that will receive him. As many that he can help. God wants to help as much people as he can. So when, we, when you gossip, when you, you're negative, you're critical, you're not partnering with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has nothing to do with that at all, at all. He loves people. He wants to help people. He, he, he's here to help us to go to the next level. Gossiping, malice, all that hurtful stuff, it's, it's partnering with another spirit that is not of God. It, it grieves him. It quenches him. How can we quench the Holy Spirit? See, the word quench is if I had a fire here and I would take water and I pour it on the fire, I would quench that fire. Something is burning and I would put it out. Do you know how we can quench the quench the Holy Spirit? Is I'll tell you a couple a couple ways. When we despise the things of the Spirit, 
Bible says don't despise prophecy. It does say judge all things, but it says don't despise it. When you mock the things of God, like for example, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, you don't understand. You might not understand it. Like for example, people falling or people are doing this. They, they, they're, they're being touched by the, by the Holy Spirit and, and it, it doesn't register in your head and you might laugh at it or you might mock it. You're quenching it. You're quenching it, first of all, in your own heart. <laughs> if you don't understand the, the, the moves of the Holy Spirit or it doesn't register in your mind, just zip your lip. The Pharisees, when Jesus came on earth, do you think they, they liked what Jesus did when he spat on, on the ground, made mud balls and put it on the, their eyes? They said, not of God. No, not of God. I, we know the Father, Jesus, we don't know you. Jesus is not here on earth. The Holy Spirit is here. So if we despise the moves of the Holy Spirit, we, we quench him, number one, in our heart. We quench him from, 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 from touching more people's lives. If you have laughed or mocked or because of your, un, uh, you don't understand. There's many things I don't understand. Do you know when, when the angel came to Mary and said, you're going you're gonna to receive Jesus. I mean, you're going to be birth of a virgin and uh, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And you're going to give birth to Jesus. Did you know what Mary did? She didn't laugh at it. She didn't mock it. This is what she did. She put it on the shelf of her heart. She put it on in, her, in her heart. She's like, God, I don't understand it. But I'm just going to put it there. I'm not going to laugh at it. God, I'm your servant. You can do whatever you want to do in me. And God manifested Jesus through her. This is important. Because the Holy Spirit's on here. He, he can be grieved and he can be quenched. We, we are praying for a revival. We're praying for God. But if a revival comes to you in, in a way that you don't understand, what are you going to do? Are you going to put it out? Because the church, if, 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 you, if you look at and you study history, the people prayed for a revival. But when revival came, the church didn't receive it. That's why you can see all the moves of God happen somewhere outside of, the, outside of church. They despised, they quenched, they grieved. And, and they, want, they want revival, but they want revival the way they know, they, the way they like it. But let me tell you, God ain't going to fit into your bubble. Look in the Old Testament. God moved with Samson this way. God moved with David this way. God moved with Gideon this way. One thing, one of the pastors that I, I used to be a part of in the church said, said, God is not a copy machine. He's not a copy machine. Then just copies, 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 copies. God says, I make all things new. But we, but we as a church need to be very careful not to grieve him and not to quench him. Because when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and he talked about the Holy Spirit, he says, the Holy Spirit is like a wind. He comes in and he leaves. You don't know when he comes and you don't know when he leaves. He does what he wants to do. But we as a church, we have to be important to receive him, to honor him, and to give him access to do what he wants to do. Amen. Do you want to see salvations? Do you want to see healings, deliverance, miracles? That is the finger of God, which is the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that these things will happen. Amen. Amen. So maybe at the end, we will ask the Holy Spirit for forgiveness in any shape or form. If we had thoughts, do you, do you know that when Jesus walked and he perceived the thoughts of of the Pharisees the Bible says the anointing and the power of God was there to heal and the Pharisees thought in within him who does he think he is and they didn't honor Jesus and they didn't receive anything for them in our thoughts in our heart in our words in our action because the Holy Spirit he's here he's on earth he must be honored if the president of the United States or or the mayor that would come into this room you would give him your most 
attention, your honor. Why? Because he's an important person. Is there anybody more important than God? So if the Holy Spirit, which is God, is here, we need to honor him. Some of us needs to give our life to Jesus in order to receive the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. He's working around you, but he's not yet in you. You need to give your life to Jesus. Others of you, you need to be baptized in his fire. Other of us needs to be filled. The Bible says, don't be filled with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. We, we need that. Church, there's a hunger in Brazil. You know, we live here in America, and because of the abundance of, of things, our dependence on God is so low. One thing I noticed when I've been in Brazil, how even that family that has, is living there, how, how so much they are depending on God. I've noticed that because they need God. And because you have so much here in America, I can do it on my own, on my own strength. Why do it on your own strength when you, can when you can do it on His? God can help you in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your schooling. You know in the Bible, the Bible says... Daniel was 10 times wiser than all the magicians simply because he prayed not even having the Holy Spirit inside of him how much more we having the Holy Spirit can be effective in God's kingdom and on earth amen so open up to Galatians Galatians 5 verse 22 says but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and because of such things against such things against such there is no law when you follow the holy spirit you do not need rules christianity is not a religion it's not a candle it's not a rule it's not something don't do this and don't do that it's not that when you have love inside of you you do not need a rule don't kill anybody did you know that the bible says rules were given to 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 the immoral the sexual immoral the lawless the rebellious rules were given to them because they need rules because they don't have anything inside of them to tell them don't do that they need they needed that and we are not given that we are not given a rule don't do this don't do this go to you can watch that movie you can't watch that movie you can see this you can't see this you're not given those kind of rules when you're filled with the holy spirit you have love you have peace you have joy that stuff flows out of your heart and you don't need any kind of rules did you know that the bible says that the law brings about uh brings about sin if you put rules into you your life, you're, you're actually going to do the opposite of actually following God. Because your nature, your sinful nature is going to be like going to that thing. Have you, ever have you ever tell a kid, don't do this. Next thing you want to, next thing they do is they do that. They do that. They do that. Church, we have a different law that God has given us. The law of life. The law of life. God didn't give you rules. He, he gave those laws, and the problem is the children of Israel and the rest of the people, they couldn't keep him. He gave you the Holy Spirit. Now, if you develop a relationship with him, if you get to know what he likes, if you get to know what he hates, and you make a close relationship like, like they had in the, book, in, the, in, in the book of Acts, it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit when you have that relationship and you walk through life God will lead you and God will guide you but you got to submit your life to him it's not your will it's his will I like what pastor Vlad says if you want to walk in the Holy Spirit you need to talk to the Holy Spirit amen let's stand
I want you to place your hand on your heart. And I want you to repeat after me. Ask God. Say, Lord, draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I may love only what is holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my works too may be holy. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may be holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me, O Holy Spirit, that I may always be holy. Guide me, O Holy Spirit, that at all times I may do what is right in your sight. Begin to open up your heart. Begin to open up your heart and ask God if there's any shape or form. Maybe you have offended the Holy Spirit. Maybe by, maybe you have grieved Him. Maybe you've spoken bad about other people. Maybe you have quenched him. Maybe you have laughed by not knowing. You know, you can see things in the natural, but you do not know what's happening in the spiritual world. You might, in your heart, maybe you have mocked, mocked in any shape or form. Begin to ask him to forgive you. Begin to ask him any shape or form you have grieved him in any way. Holy Spirit is a lover. He wants to help you. He wants to be there for you. He's, he has given to you as a companion. In Corinthians, it talks about, may the, may the, when I, it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We talk, we pray to Jesus, we pray to the Father, but we talk to the Holy Spirit because He has given, He has been given to us alongside of this journey of life. He will take you from point A to point B. He will take you through a broken relationship to, to a healthy one. He will, he will lead you in your tough time. In the moments in life when it gets really, really hard, He will be there because He will never leave you and He'll never forsake you. But ask Him to forgive you, to wash you, and to cleanse you. That your relationship with Him would be such, so close that you will know what God's will is is for your life. Hey, this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.